Okay. And um, please give a, a big warm welcome to Liz. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much and thanks for inviting me to talk. It's been a while since I've talked in front of so many people. In a past life I was a trainer so I'm going to see if I can still write on the flip chart. Um, I was listening to Rory's and I thought mine will carry on because mine is also, my work is about evolving consciousness of the individual to align with the planet, you know, so we grow and learn with the planet. Um, and it's great to be in Coventry because in 1996, I met my husband over there, Richard, who lived in Coventry at the time. And for two, three years, we lived here. So our daughter was born here. And I was really interested about the node because Richard does energy dowsing and he mapped out some energies at Coventry and got permission to do meditation in the ruins. So that was about 98, 99. We had 13 people appear on a full moon. So that was pretty, uh, now we know the significance. We knew we had to do it. But also in Coventry, I set up a group called Coventry Lightways, where we used to get different speakers in. And I remember a lady knocking on my door one day, she said, I think I need to talk to you. I've got a lot of people from the war coming through my house. So, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so these type of experiences have happened to me all along my life. You know, being in a room of 100 people, I was listening to Barbara Marciniak, does anybody know her, Bringers of the Dawn? And a chap comes up to me and he said, you need to hold this. And it was a huge crystal skull. And I'm thinking, oh, not another one of these things where, <laughs> you know, you've got to do these things. Um, so anyway, I'll go back in time. Just tell me, I'll tell you a bit about me, my dowsing, and what process I put in place to douse your beliefs, your emotions, and why that's important for you to be the best person, the best version of you as you can. So it's really getting you back into your own light or your own original <laughs> blueprint, health-wise, um, emotionally, mentally. So I've had a very varied career, so, and this is relevant because I work with so many different types of people. Um, so I've screwed darts together in a dart factory, but I've also managed a multi-million pound company and managed people, but also sold newspapers on a railway station. So it's not like an in-between. Um, and I didn't know anything about energy at all till I was about 26 and um, went to my first mind, body, spirit show, got invited onto a psychic circle, which I traveled about 90 miles to every week and back. So I got, in, I got introduced to some weird and wonderful things back then, you know. Saw people change shape. We did past life stuff, crystal stuff. And I trained four years in colour therapy. But from then, well, I've done the body, the crystals, the colour, um, light body work. I won't give you the whole lot, but loads of stuff. And um, in about 1996, when I met... Oh, this was just before I left a husband, I left a job, I left a house, and then I had my big awakenings of everything. So, uh, and then I was ready four years later to meet my husband here energetically, and we met on a cosmic energy disc workshop. So I thought, well, this is a bit uh, <laughs> different than meeting in the local nightclub or the local pub. And our first date was around the Roll Wright Stones, which is not far from here. So I thought, he's either trying to charm me or we've got this energy connection anyway. It's the energy connection going on. Um, I had my daughter in uh, Coventry Hospital and I had an underactive thyroid after that. And I was convinced not to take thyroxine. I thought, I've got to put my money where my mouth is with this energy work. And a dowser in Berkshire sorted it for me remotely or we did it together, you know. Um, and I knew then... You know, we've just got to keep doing this. For the life of me, I can't remember how I got hold of a book of Jack Temple. But I did, read it, thought, I've got to do this. Rang, call starting in a month's time on my birthday. Well, one place left, right? Yeah. Well, how do I get the money? You know, got a little good, it wasn't working. So I rang my mum and I said, can I borrow that funeral money you've just put by? <laughs> Literally. So when people say to me, you can't afford things, I think, if you want to do it, see where you can get the money from. Anyway, so I studied with Jack Temple for two years. But prior to that, I'd done a lot of 
other work energetically, mainly based around emotions and your inner energy universe. Um, and I, I served an apprenticeship up in North London with a lady who brought NLP over to the UK with Bandler and Grinder, if you're these, anyways, dropping names. Um, but she worked out with her clients that you can go into the system to change beliefs, but behind the beliefs is an energy format of light. And once you bring that forward, the beliefs change. They can't not because you're bringing your soul blueprint, if you like, or your up to date being through. Now, they wrote a book in the end called The Missing Piece. And I'm mentioned in this, my claim to fame. Um, now, what, what I'm going to tell you about it is there's some pictures of blood. Now, where is he? He was talking about blood this morning, blood coagulation. Yes. Well, somebody came for a session, an inner journey session. So this was pre-dowsing. Um, terrible digestive problems, ulcers, whatever. I think she's about 25, 26. And uh, tried everything, came. And she saw me first was a trainee, got apprentice. I did about five sessions. And what you're trying to do is work out where's the energy stuck, what's going on inside her, such that she's manifesting these physical symptoms. Um, so it wasn't nutrition, anything, it wasn't toxins, nothing. It was literally just emotions, belief, or stuck energy that we could get to, or she could get to herself. She had five sessions with me, was a bit more aware of herself, because it's really bringing awareness to people. And then she came back with what I call the big boys, the two people that were teaching me. Um, I think she had about another six sessions. Without us knowing, she'd gone, well, in Harley Street somewhere, to have her blood taken. I think it's called an HBL or something, a uh, blood test. And the, you won't see it, but if you ever want to see it, the top blood showed um, the unhealthiness, if you like, of her blood. Halfway through the sessions, the second one got worse. So it was like a healing crisis, like everything was really coming up. And after the sessions, and I think it was about four months, her blood was totally healthy, no pain, nothing at all. No extra vitamins, no change of food, nothing, just inner, what I call inner work. And I knew then, so that was 1996, our body changes when we change our minds and emotions. Not always, you know, there's other influencing factors that we've heard this morning. So I knew that, and I also knew just from my own inner work, we're built on love and light. And that's always fundamentally been the basis of my work. So I did more studying into what you call your light body. I've done things about awakening the illuminate heart. So I know about heart math, heart brain connection, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What I'm going to talk to you today is how to douse this emotions. Because although I'm a sort of qualified therapist, if you like, without dousing, I thought there must be a way that we can get to this without all the stuff that I've had, to, I've done, you know, my training. But a dowser could come and say, right. This is your belief that's underlying your health problems, if it's linked. So I've also uh, did some study in nonviolent communication. So it was, and I always wanted to teach people how to be a nice person. I always wanted to do that as a kid. I've not managed that yet, but how do we be a nice person? And I thought, well, really, we be a nice person by raising our energies. Because all the energies of love, joy, adventure, investigation, um, peace, harmony, they're all on the upscale, aren't they? You know, which is what we're all saying this morning, you up your energy, the planet's upscaling. Um, and if we let go of all this, and you might call it the matrix of us, or our personalities that are all there, all in, in the way of us being our pure self, how do we get rid of all this? Well, you can find it, thousand. Um, before I go through the process, some of you may say, have you heard of the emotion code? Which a few people said to me, well, I hadn't heard of the emotion code before I'd done this. And then I looked at it and I thought, well, it's very similar to what I do. And I'm always fascinated where different people in the world can have information, think they're the only one on the planet that's got that information, where somebody in a remote whatever has got the same information. <laughs> so I remember writing 
So the chap that wrote the emotion code, because part of his book, it says, I'm the only one who does this. And I went, I beg to disagree, because I live in a little village in Shropshire in my workshop with a pendulum, and I've come up with the same thing. So we all get, I don't know how it happens, and nobody got any theories. Something happens and we waken, don't we, to a little pocket somewhere. Um, pardon? Oh, God. <laughs> right. Now, the reason I thought we could douse these energies is we can't see emotions, we can't see beliefs, so there must be waveforms. So a colour is a waveform, a sound is a waveform. I said, so the waveform of anger, and they have been, um, you can see them on diagrams, I'm not scientific, a great bloke who does describe all this really well is somebody called Joe Dispenza, if you ever want to listen to him. He scientific Joe Dispenza. He describes exactly what I do, but he can describe it scientifically. So I'm really, really pleased that he does uh, describe it really well. So there's a wave pattern of anger. Might be going like this. Might relate it to the colour red. You know, there must be a sound that must make us all feel angry. So I thought, well, we could douse that frequency, surely. We can douse that. We can pick that up. So the peace or harmony might be like this. Might be more blue or something. I don't know. Kind of blue. <laughs> Sound will make us more harmonious, won't it? We all know listening to music make us feel a different way. We can douse the frequencies then. So what I need to do, if I said to a body system, your multi-dimensional body system, that could be anywhere in time and space, but time and space doesn't exist, space-time, so I won't go into all that today, but there must be a waveform somewhere that I could say anger, and I'll get, I'll do this, my pendulum. I bet we all do this sometimes, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yes. So anger, got it, yes. If they didn't have anger anywhere in them, I wouldn't get yes, I'd get an, I would get a blank, you know, neutral or no. So I thought, well, if I asked it all the questions, it would just tell me, won't it? And it does. Your system will tell you. I mean, I listen and do it other ways as well, but this way I've successfully taught other people to douse because it's logical, because really, and amongst all my airy fairiness and weirdness, I'm very logical. It's got to make sense, you know. It's got to somehow resonate as best I can with what uh, makes sense. So, <clears throat> get it so far? Any questions? Make sense? Okay. Now, how I get to a lot of these emotions anyway is via a body part. I've got a great example. <clears throat> I had someone come to me with um, allergies. She said, every time I go into my parents' house, if I ever see any of you closing your eyes, I know it's your dinner, and I've got a, bog, a bag of pens here <laughs> that Jane gave me. And I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Every time she goes into her mum and dad's house, sneezes, eyes run, headaches, everything. So I said, okay, bring some hairs off the carpet, cat hairs, an open, a jar of air, etc. She comes to me, she's about 80, uh, 86, 26. Let me know what you eat. So I do allergy dousing as well. So I was chatting away to her, first of all, tell me, oh, I've just got a new job. Yeah, yeah and tell me what it was all about so I clock all these things so everybody something tells you just got to note it all to build up a big picture of the person so right food yeah you're allergic to spinach she went really I thought it was healthy no not for you all the things that people think are healthy to eat sometimes they're not no problem with anything in the house at all so I thought whoa what's going on so um I got to read my notes to make sure I've got it um to tell you I think it was her kidneys so what I ask is priority. So I don't know how many people in here trained with, trained with Jack Temple, but he taught us to go through priorities. So I say to the system, in consideration to this whole symptoms that are coming out, what's priority? So I'm talking to a whole multidimensional being. Is it a body system? Is it an organ? Is it a gland? And I go through as many things as I possibly can and know. Kidneys. How well are they working? Like 60%. And I thought, well, what's that got to do with the allergy? Is it, then when I got the kidneys, is it a pathogen, bacteria, parasites? Is it uh, electromagnetic, earth energies? You know, everything I go through, no, it's an emotion. 
And I go back through her whole timeline. When did this first start? When, when, what, when can we trace back farthest to when this disturbance happened? Around the age of eight. And what did she need that she didn't get? So that's my first question is, what did we all need? And I'll show it in a minute, that you didn't get. She needed respect and self-respect. Who did you need it from? So I'm asking her system all this dowsing from her father. So I said to her, and then I thought, I wonder what her dad thinks of her new job. So I said, lack of respect from your father made her feel powerless. And I think the belief was, I'm not worthy. So I doused all this, and I'll show you the list I doused. Found out, I'm not worthy, so I'm powerless. All in her energy, just tells me all of it through dowsing. So I said, what did your dad think of your new job? She went, oh, the tears, everything streamed out of her. And I thought, I've just linked now with when she's eight from a disturbance from when she's eight is resonating still all through on her unconscious, affecting her kidneys, causing the allergic reaction. No word of a lie, it stopped there and then. And it was the most magical thing. I thought, oh my God, I know this works, but like that. She went back into the house, no problem. So it was not the house at all. It was the relationship with her dad through the new job. Get that one? When you ask these questions, who are you asking? I'm asking her energy system. I'm asking her what I call a multi-dimensional being, and that could be anywhere, anywhere, it, her ancestors, because they're all linked. It could be any planet, they're linked, future, past, anywhere. So as, as far and as wide as I can go, I ask, really. Um, so it's the truth of her being to give me the answers. That makes sense? And I know it's there, and it, because, you know, I'll, I'll douse it out. Um, so I'm going to show you the process on here. For example, let's say you come into life. I'm not going to do past up at the moment. We'll do this. There's one lovely radiant being, full of light. It's your soul blueprint, if you like, your health. And here you are now. And let's say at the age of two, you needed safety. Need. Can you see? Can you roughly see this? I see it. Need safety. So your need for safety wasn't met. So I call it an unmet need. So you didn't feel safe. Now, how would you feel? emotionally if you were two years old go back <laughs> and you didn't feel safe what would the emotion be potentially fear i'll take the first but it could be many yeah somebody said fear did they fear now what could your belief be i'll give you one I'll give you an example the world is a dangerous place yeah dangerous place that is resonating on a mental level this is resonating on an emotional level and there she is at two years old thinking the world's a dangerous place two-year-old energy i'm going to hide away and you put the energy somewhere maybe in the chest in the stomach in the liver up there anywhere head i'm going to keep out the way to keep safe because the world's dangerous. So that is one belief pattern, energy pattern, resonating in the unconscious still today. Yeah? So, goes along in life, five-year-old. Five-year-old wants friendship. You know, first day at school. I get a lot of issues from the first day at school. First day at school, nobody wants to be my friend. So, wants friendship. That's fiendship, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> 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 
doesn't make any friends, what belief might you surmise if you have no friends? Could be. That's, that's an emotion more than a belief. So what might you believe about yourself? I'm unworthy. I'm not good enough. Unworthy. Pardon? No one likes me. So we've got all these. And I'm glad we're all different because as a Taoist, you cannot assume that somebody will think the way you think. So you keep so neutral that you have to say it to their system because it may be something totally different than you thought it might be. So let's go. I'm un unworthy. Belief. That's the belief. And if you have that belief, how might you feel? Lonely. Lonely. Oh, I like you. Where's that? <laughs> right. So. Belief, mental level, lonely, emotional level. And these will carry on unless they're sorted till now. Yeah? And I could go on. You could have a seven-year-old who needed to play. Seven years. You've got an 11-year-old there. Needed play. Didn't happen. Um, what would you believe though, if nobody wanted to play with you? Or you weren't allowed to play at school. So you're playing around at school, messing around, and you get told off, I must be bad because I want to play. Life's not fair. Life's not fair. Yeah? Sad. So you've got life's not fair, sad. Again, now, these are there, all underlying. So when you douse, Let's say the two-year-old energy ended up in her head. So health dowsing, I get to the pineal gland or the pituitary gland, uh, not working about 50%, not a toxin, not, an, not a pathogen, not underlying energies, and you get to a belief pattern in the head. And I go through a whole list of potential beliefs or needs to find what it is. And I know it's an energy format that's stuck. It's stuck and it's still going. Now how it loops like this. Let's say now at the age you are, um, let's say I come to this place and I think an underlying I've got all oh, the world's a dangerous place, the world's a dangerous place. Now I'm resonating that energy out of my being, the world's a dangerous place, the world's a dangerous place. What might happen to me on the way here? It was a dangerous place. Oh, car accident. What else was, or I see car accidents. Oh, crikey, I'll get mugged. It was a dangerous place. Well, I see lots of ambulances. Let's not go quite so dramatic, but yeah. It was a dangerous place. Lots of potholes. <laughs> I've just read the newspaper about Coventry and all the muggings. It was a dangerous place. Life will show me exactly what I believe because my energies are going to match it, aren't they? Going to track it. Can I track it? So I get the world's a dangerous place and I flip into, I need safety. And I flip into fear. And if there's any a time where I flip into fear, it will instill and show me that I'm true because the world's a dangerous place. And I go round and round. So any time I might feel lonely, I'm unworthy because I'm lonely. Because I'm flitting, yeah? Yes. And it is, because energetically, it links. We link to there, or we could link straight to here. You know, you're going out, let's say at this age, you wanted to go out for a night, nobody wanted to come with you, so you think, I've got no friends. Straight into, I must be unworthy. But somebody else might say, well, everybody's busy tonight, I've got my own. Because if they haven't got this pattern, they won't slip into lonely. See? All the underlying things. Now, these relate to the physical form um, a lot of the times. Um, How much do you need to be aware of speculation? I never speculate anything. I always ask the system. I never assume Secondly, it's always what the system's told me. So if you're asking the system, yeah. uh, do you think that you need to be aware 
no, uh, yes, no, because I asked the questions. I asked the questions, so I'll show you. This is how I do it, I'll go into the process. You won't see this, but you can have a look later. And I'm just trying to think how I can share this with you because I've taught it for a day and everything, but I've taken a list of needs from nonviolent communication, so basic human needs. You could argue on a spiritual level, we don't have any needs at all, but I'm not doing it on that level. I'm doing it on a good old human level. So need for connection, acceptance, belonging, need for consideration or consistency, need for honesty, play, peace, safety, water, food, um, need for hope, need for learning. So all of these. So what I first do is doused. Um, I had a lady come to me, this is li literally recently, had two miscarriages and I got to a pituitary gland. So I doused, got to emotions, found is emotional, mental, level, energy. So my dousing went to when did this, for, where is that? disturbance or how far can I go because it may be way back but the system only says you're not going further than 11 because I don't know you very well and you're a bit scary so as a dowser we've got to be very careful because that their system needs to get to know us and we need to be respectful of their system anyway this lady I went back to when she was three months in the womb so do anybody here douse back in time for yeah yeah three months back in the womb so I thought, what did she need that she didn't get at three months in the womb? And what she needed, so I doused the list. I don't assume what does a fetus need in the womb. I doused, literally, go through. And somebody said to me, and I was teaching once, what do you say, is it in that line, is it that line, is it that line? And I said, no, not always. And I'll, I'll tell you why. I was teaching once, and a lady who did kinesiology said, just go through the lines. I say, well, for some reason, I don't do that with you. I said, not everybody. So I doused through, and I realized she had a need for something like compassion from her mother. Oh, she just burst into tears, because she just got right to the spot. And I said, if I'd whizzed through, you wouldn't have got any compassion from me whatsoever, would you? So I couldn't have shared what your energy was with you. So we have to be not just a list dowser. Um, anyway, I'll douse you the list of the needs. And this baby needed closeness. So I thought, well, did the baby in the womb need closeness or was it her mother? But it was her mum who needed to be close. I don't know, to her partner or whatever. And it didn't happen. I see a few eyes go in here. Okay. Um, so she didn't get closeness so I doused well what did you believe because you didn't get closeness and what she believed is something bad will happen and that list is on my beliefs list so I've compiled a list a lot list of potential beliefs it's not exhaustive but you know you can't spend for ages just dousing beliefs but she had to think bad will happen now considering this lady wants to get pregnant and she's had two miscarriages so what's the baby going to do resonate with her mum something bad's going to happen oh I'm out then I'm out of here I'm out of here because that's what's happened the miscarriages are not the you know baby's not and um the feeling she got was nervous and she learned to panic actually she she, she learned a behavior to panic and i thought just relate that back to a, a fetus who wants to stay with you and you've got a belief that says something bad's going to happen panic well what's the baby going to do well i'm not going to stay here am i no I'm getting out of here <laughs> and it was linked to her, her hormonal system thankfully she's pregnant so i'm like, gosh, if this is clear, so we've worked with this to clear the belief, hoping uh, the baby might stay. Um, so I go through a belief. And after the beliefs, it's like, well, how would you feel if your needs are not met? And I go through a whole list of 
negative beliefs, if you like. So it could be, you've already said some actually. Uh, hang on. Afraid, dread, frightened, panicked, scared, numb, feeling withdrawn or removed, feeling lonely, miserable, gloomy. You know, you could go on forever, couldn't you, of, of negative feelings. But as an energy frequency, these are down, aren't they? Low. And if we're trying to evolve consciousness, <laughs> it's these energies that we don't want to be playing into. And it's also these energies that keep our energy stuck. So what we're doing is holding on to patterns, restricting our own energy, holding on, holding on. So probably by the time I've got here, at least four lots of energy, one up here, one in my gut, one in my liver, they're all being held. So I might only be 60% of my true energy here because the rest is playing out in this matrix field of frequencies. Yeah? So the more we can get these out of the way or what you actually do, you might have heard of inner children. We don't keep this as a two-year-old or a five-year-old. Inside her, I say her, because I'm female, is her energy, her light, her excitement, her harmony. And that's the energy that comes through here and comes through time into the age you are now. So you're all integrated into now. Yeah, does that make sense? Because we don't want to be forever acting as a five-year-old, but we could have the qualities of a five-year-old now. Um, I'll give you a, um, another way of dousing emotions. I've recently come across something called German New Medicine. So you've heard of it. I've, not, I've only in a year come across that. And it's great because it's a scientific way of, uh, they measured the brain, and if there was a fear, they don't call it fears, I can't remember. Let's say a fear of abandonment, which is a, in animals and as well as in humans. So they looked at animal races and humans. Fear of abandonment links to a place in the brain that then links to the kidneys. And you could see on the, you know, scientifically they put on their diagrams how a part of the brain linked up that linked to the kidneys. I'm not a great fan of thinking that every single emotion of anger affects the liver, because it doesn't, but... And I kept this in mind, because I think it's a great system that you could show um, diagrammatically, energetically, scientifically what happens. Uh, about four years ago, I had a new client who had had kidney failure for about five years. Everything he did, on everything under the sun you could think of. Energy-wise, toxins, bought nutrients, it cleared everything. I worked emotionally. Well, he was adopted very early on and abused very early on in, in life. And he never, ever got through certain things. And I thought, everything I've tried. Nothing worked. And when I come across the German New Medicine, the link to the kidneys with fear of abandonment, this is what it was. Unfortunately, he did die. He was on kidney dialysis, but of course, the NHS abandoned him. Everybody abandoned him. And the pattern was so deep. We couldn't change it. So I heard a few months ago he died, and I thought, that fear that just linked. So what he had to do was to change the brain state that linked to the kidneys. Uh, a bit sad, really, but um, it just showed me. And the other thing you can do, do any of you douse books? Or, um, well, well, there's another huge book called The uh, Anatomy, Metaphysical Anatomy. Again, it's not long. I'm always thinking of how else, what's an easy way, what's simple to douse. And um, I had somebody, I picked up thyroid problems. She didn't know, but I thought, this thyroid's really low. And it was emotional, and I could pick nothing up on my list. So I thought, where else can I think? Because you could, you know, doesn't speak up, or toxins, or whatever. And I went through this book, and it said strangulation. And I thought, 
That's exactly what I thought. Oh my God, how can I tell her she's got strangulation in her system? Thinking, has she been strangled? I was like, mm, be a bit careful here, because I couldn't guarantee that she had been strangled or not. You might say douse for it. I was like, oh, just be a bit careful. So I worded it like, in your energy field, there's a resonance of strangulation. So I pick it up because I said the word strangulation to her system and I got a yes. That's, that's all I did. So uh, by then I did a report, I hadn't met her. And she messaged back, she said, yeah, my boyfriend tried to strangle me. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> this is, first of all, how amazing is this that you can pick it up with dowsing? But also, that's affecting your thyroid. You know, how many times would you go to a doctor, thyroid this and that, and you think, yeah, clear the energy of strangulation. We haven't thought, we haven't dealt with it, this is literally recentness. And I thought, the energy frequency of strangulation from whatever happened is straight in there, straight in her thyroid. Um, there are many times where people have, have gone through the route of toxins, pathogens, everything, and it comes down to emotions, you know. Um, and our emotions will also resonate with the earth energies, you know. Um, yes, we'll go through clearing house energies, but people sometimes also go to places um, that they resonate with, with the energy of the house. You know, energies of the house might be divorce, separation, anger, and they'll go to it because their energy system resonates with that. <coughs> yeah. Any questions? Oh. I wish it did. <laughs> it's an energy frequency, isn't it? So there are many different ways, and you've got to ask the system, really, what's the best way. Sometimes, as I've said, sometimes just acknowledging it the whole system, the whole thing just clears, sometimes. But some of my clients aren't near me, they're miles away. Sometimes, so what you need is an energy frequency that's lighter to lift it. And this would relate to everything, won't it? It's like someone said at the back, how you can clear EMFs with intent. Well, it's your intent. So sometimes your intent can lift it. Sometimes if my energies are higher, they'd lift it. Anyway, you know, just be in there, you lift it. Because you always feel better if you're with somebody who feels better, don't you? Sometimes a flower remedy will have a higher frequency. Sometimes a tree remedy, homeopathic. So you've got to douse through collect um, colours, sounds. It's a range of things that you might say, well, that'll raise it enough that they become aware and then choose another way. And sometimes I actually say to them, say to your system, I choose to feel safe, to let go of being unworthy. Because when they're younger, they don't have a choice or they don't think they've got a choice. So once they choose, it's amazing how it will shift. So there are, there are ways. I mean, I'd like to think I just wave my magic wand and it's all cleared. And sometimes it does because... It's an energy frequency, right? So any of you clear energies in the land, they're energy frequencies, and sometimes with your intent, you can flatline it, neutralize it. Well, that's all a motion is. That's all a belief is. So, some, so I do say clear through all types of space reality, this frequency, and neutralize. It's like having a piece of string doing that. You say, just do that. Yes. What you, the, the thing you've got to be careful of, that's in your own energy for this, the reason she's still there is because she wants to keep safe and protected and hidden sometimes. We're very good at hiding, keeping safe. Yes, yes. And sometimes we gain from keeping these. So, five-year-old who feels lonely so you see a little five-year-old all alone what do you do what does someone say then give him a hug so that five-year-old has learnt if i'm lonely i get a hug if i'm ill i can stay off school and be with my mum so they can gain and it, so why would a five-year-old what not want to do that if they get a hug well, the reason is because they're fueled by a negative emotion. So they're fueled 
I'm unworthy, I'm lonely, I get a hug. Wouldn't it be lovely? I'm amazing and beautiful and exciting and I get a hug. So the fuel or the energy on the planet, if we could get that fuel, you know, um, I gain energy from eating loads and loads of chocolate or loads and loads of whatever, is different to I gain energy from being out in nature and being out. You still get the energy, but you get it in a detrimental way. So, so, so you can do it. And how I suggest you do it, if in life you come across certain things time and time again, like, God, she keeps telling me that. She keeps saying the same thing. And you listen. What, what's, the, what's the world showing you? Because it may well be resonating with you if it affects you. So many angry people in the shops today pushing past each other. And I went, oh, I didn't see them. You know, if you're not on that wavelength, you won't see it. You won't come across it. But if you're on that wavelength, life is always like that. So if you, it, it's really self-awareness. So I suppose my work here is waking people up to who they are truly without all this stuff and they can do it themselves really or with some support which then lightens the energies on the planet <laughs> and from what Rory is saying it's like evolution of consciousness they then have more ability to contact more of their other selves from other planets or higher selves is like getting into their zero point field people heard of things like this getting into the neutralness of self where they can create um, beyond all this so I think that's really but the way I got to it was through the health dancing um, Jack used to say to us he's got an emotion Jack Temple clear the emotion and I was more nosy I thought but what is that what is that what is that about so I just went further in further into it um, yeah thanks for that question any other questions when you talked about um, the pineal yeah Yes, always. I always douse the work and efficiency of the area that I found, really just to know that if, if it is the emotions or anything's cleared, will the energy go up? Um, will the energy go up? Yeah. Um, yeah, in percentages. I work in percentages. Um, Yeah, a lot of digestive issues are emotional because you've got a vagus nerve that goes right to the brain, to the gut. Um, so a lot of that is, um, yeah. Uh, but I recently had a 19-year-old, again, it was thyroid, actually. She had a need for beauty. Didn't happen. She obviously didn't feel very beautiful at that age. Went into embarrassment and the belief of I'm inferior. So she carried that on through her life and um, became totally detached. But you could say detachment is actually very beneficial because you're out the way. But her detachment was through embarrassment. So, um, yeah, working that out. Yes? When you're with her, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I, I've got my own little workshop at, at home. So I suppose I'm always considering myself and my energies anyway. So I work on myself, it, you know, if I've got anything going on with me. Grounding, well, I do the go outside with bare feet. That's my um, grounding thing. Uh, and I, I suppose I have my energy calling in patterns, right? You know, I, um, Taurus, you know, the energy of the Taurus. I use that with me. I, there's a lot of energy formats I've learned over the years in light body work, different energy centers. I use um, an octahedron shape for me. So the, what I'm showing you here is a very small amount of like my work, if you like, energetically. And the Merkaba um, energy that moves. So I have to make sure I'm okay. I'm generally upbeat. But, you know, I've learned along the way, you know, how your energies dip. We all know, don't we, how it goes up and down. Um, yeah, so we do need to have our, my bog standard is I get in an octahedron shape, my diamond, and that normally sorts most things. 
um, I had a great one, I'll tell you this. Have I got time for another quick story? I forgot to tell you, did I tell you this? Tell me if I did. When we were in Coventry, oh, I told you we did it, now I've done that. Um, <laughs> what was I just gonna tell you? Okay, what was it? Oh, I know. I had a client and kept getting poorly. And what it was is she had entities kept attaching. So whatever you believe entities are, but she had energies attaching to her that depleted her. I won't go into what that might be. So I thought, well, what is she believing that she can have entities attached to her? So you might believe I'm a victim or the world's a dangerous place. So these things can come in, kept depleting, cleared them, coming in, cleared them, coming in. So I only remember this when he said, what do you do? And I thought, I'm fed up with this. <laughs> so literally, right, I sat there on my own dad's thing. She was somewhere else. I said, Lord to the light. Now, I didn't know who I was calling on. I just said, Lord to the light, I'm fed up with this. You stand there, you stand there, and you stand there, and you stand there, and you stop her being affected by these energies. She hadn't a clue what I'd said or done, because she was away. I was just not having it. it, so it was my huge intent of love and whatever, and uh, she never had him again for a whole year, and she said, what'd you do? I said, well, I just made something up. I just made something up, and I thought light, light and your intent and your determination will, you know, sort a lot of things out. Not in anger, not in protection. It, well, for her, it was a bit of protection, actually. I'm not a great fan of putting up protections because your energy will transform things before they get into you. But she needed it anyway, and it worked. I thought, God, this is remote dancing. This is remote energy work. Yeah, that was pretty cool, actually. Yeah, well, and I didn't think it was me. I was just like, right, I'm just going to call them in. Call them in, sort them out. Yeah. You've got patterns that go back either yeah. in past lives yeah. or in current lives. Yeah. And do you ever get people whose context traumas are so complex you can't feel grounded because they've laid them down? Yeah. You just got to go bit by bit. And the more compassionate you are, the more you're in your heart, the more you know your intent for doing your work. Yeah. Yeah. I had. Give me the time. I had a lady come to me, rashes all over her body. Should I have been everywhere, everywhere to get this sorted, everywhere. And um, nothing got sorted. Home, every allergy, doctor, everything. So I thought, oh, I don't know me, you like this. Oh, somebody else comes to me because nobody else can help them. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. um, and uh, she sat down in my room. And it was probably about nine months after our family were involved in a really bad car accident, really bad. So I'd experienced post-traumatic stress, trauma, Never, and uh, our daughter nearly died, so just give you a bit of a bottom line. <laughs> so I know what trauma does to the body. Anyway, so I got back to work, and I was chatting away to her, and her baby died after six hours. Well, that shifted the whole thing. And I was the right person at the right time because my daughter nearly died. So whatever resonated in my compassion and my resonance with her shifted it, and the skin cleared. So I suppose I trust the universe to bring me who I might be able to support and when and whatever. So, yeah. So if, if it's meant to be that we go to 16 generations back, you will go there if your own awareness is big enough to know that's possible and contact that. So, yeah, we can go off different planets, bring bits back. Because I think they're all happening anyway now. I think they're all resonating somewhere now. Sorry, I've Oh, I've just got to go, yeah. Do you, have a, do you have a belief that the universe is working towards our wholeness and healing, i.e. the universe has a pattern of love that we need to reinstall? I think we are the universe. Yeah. And I think we create with the universe. So I think we get to a state where we are the creators. But what's happened here is we've created in a negative way um, because we had to survive. So this is survival, isn't it? And then you get to an awareness where you create and live. Yeah. I will stop. Oh, just a quick. It's just a thing to throw into the people's thoughts. A lady came to me once, a neighbour, who had never settled. 
and in her life, whatever she did, she was always never settled, never grounded. So the first thing I said to her was, well, where were you born? She said, two hours ago to New York, I was in Bow Jet unexpectedly. And I said, that's it. <laughs> and it cleared it. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing what can happen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your questions. Thanks. And, and thank you for staying awake, most of you, as well, after dinner. <laughs> Thank you, and that was fantastic.